iVolumeMusicRadio.com. The business knowledge broker. Home. Hey, yo, Guru, you ready? Business, marketing, accounting, social Let's media, business, resources, strategies, business, tips, even the business knowledge broker hour. It's the Sabbath business. Grants. Business. Knowledge Broker Alright, alright, hey, hey, hey This is Candace Joseph here uh, Back here at High Vibe Music Radio You know what, like I said, each and every week I have amazing and amazing Amazing guests So my next guest, you know She is awesome as well And the thing about it is, is that I love the fact that all of my guests tonight have You know, had some type of connection um, in the the spaces and the fact that they're authors and the things that they're writing about and the services that they're giving to people. So I'm going to bring up the mic of my next guest and you know, as with always, guys, I love for people to introduce themselves. So I'm going to bring up her mic. Hello. Hi there. Uh, this is uh, I'm Hunter. I'm the author of What Children Remember, and I'm a licensed social worker. Look, look, I love that. She got right into it. She said, hey, I am an author, and, you know, uh, I love the fact that she just went right in. <laughs> you know, the reason why I like for people to introduce themselves on the show is to, you know, uh, I want people to get to know you just right off the bat and to know who you are. And I want you to tell the the listeners that are tuning in because you have a couple, you know, you have some great things going on. I want you to tell them, you know, about Ascension Growth Center. And I also want you to talk about your book. Let's talk about the center first. Sure. I opened my private practice earlier this year in March and wanted to specialize working with helpers, caretakers, people that often forget to take care of themselves, yes, basically. <laughs> and uh, people who also have a history of childhood trauma. And so that is uh, the majority of the population that I work with. Uh, the majority of the people I work with are people of color, black, black women, black men, and also women who struggle with infertility. Mm. And so uh, right after I opened my private practice in March, I also published my book, What Children Remember. And it's a memoir where I discuss my own history of childhood trauma. And I, how I got from there to here basically you know, to the point of helping other people that experience the same that I experienced. Wow. Well, I have to say that the services that you offer, you know, um, through your center are absolutely great. You know, you mentioned, you know, uh, men and women, but you also help veterans as well. Um, you know, you help teens as well. And I have to say, I absolutely love the fact that you do those things. You know, I, I think that is awesome. Totally awesome. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So tell us a little bit more. I know you said that, you know, the book came from, you know, you opened a practice and then you put out the book. Can you give us a little bit more motivation that, you know, because when I believe that when a writer sits down and put their thoughts on paper, you know, it was because they really wanted to make sure that, um, you know, they reached someone. So. Tell me a little bit about the motivation that you had in writing your book. Yeah, so when I was kind of thinking about writing my book, I had this image of women who were just like me, who had experienced sexual abuse, physical abuse, 
parental abandonment and had lived with shame, you know, due to those experiences. Mm. And so many people who experience abuse also live with that secret shame. And oftentimes I kind of call it the, it's like an invisible wilderness. I think that's, a, so great, I think walk, that's a great way to say that. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're walking around with all of these secrets and feeling like we're the only ones when that can be furthest from the truth. <laughs> so I wanted my book to tell the real story of what trauma looked like from my childhood into adulthood. Wow. And I did not, um, I didn't stray from any, anything that previously caused me shame. Wow. You know, those things that we probably, like we kind of think, well, should I really put this in the book? <laughs> I put all of that stuff in there. Awesome. That is awesome. And think about it. Like you, you wrote your memoir based on the things that you went through. And as an adult, you decided to go into, you know, the social work field and decide to, you know, open up a center where people, where you can help other people. And I love that because a lot of times people feel like, oh, okay, I'm going to this therapist or I'm going to talk to this social worker or I'm going to, you know, this center and uh, I'm just going to talk to strangers who don't know, who've never yeah. been through anything that I've been through. How mm -hmm. can I relate to them? How can they relate to me? And they don't know anything about my story. I absolutely yep. love that, that you, you, even though you went through those things as a, a, a kid and you talked about those in your memoir, but as an adult, you showed how you overcame those things and how you're, you're wanting to be that instrument to help people heal. I love it. Absolutely. Um, in my practice, I often tell my clients that I am a wounded healer. And, I, and I'm not so comfortable with the term wounded, <laughs> but I want them to know that I'm a therapist that sees a therapist. Yeah. That's how strongly I believe in what I do. And so when they look at me, they know that, oh, she's gone through the same thing. Yeah. So I'm not just giving them the therapy talk, right? The, the academic talk and all of that stuff. Yeah. But I'm coming from a real place. I love that. I absolutely love that. And the thing about it is you, you just started this practice this year. Yep. <laughs> See, uh, and this is the thing too. I love the fact that I have been meeting a lot of people that, you know, um, were getting into entrepreneurship space or forming their own companies at the start of, you know, uh, what is now known as COVID-19. And mm -hmm. I love the fact that you didn't stop. I love it. I couldn't. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm all in now. <laughs> I, you know, I done got the website. I, you know, I, 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 I put, look, my name is on the door. I have to keep pushing. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, once you start spending money to open your business, it's like, let's just do it. Yeah, yeah, and, and I love it. I absolutely so love it. I started out with uh, teletherapy. Okay. And I still primarily do teletherapy due to COVID-19. Yeah. I do have some clients that come in, but we mask up and we maintain that physical distance between each other, um, and they still get what they need. Wow. I love that. I absolutely love that because, you know, um, it's, it's amazing that, you know, first and foremost, you know, look, big ups to telemedicine. Let's go there first. <laughs> Round of applause. You know, because this is a thing I remember back in the day, people used to like beg for this, used to beg for to be able to go to the doctor and, you know, through telemed. And now is it's a thing like it's here now. And I love the fact that people are using it because it gives them the space to um, be safe, you know, with everything. But then I feel like sometimes, with you know, with telemed, you know, you, you don't have to worry about somebody in the next room listening to you while you tell the doctor your ailments. So it gives it a little bit more privacy right. too. So I, I absolutely love that you do that because, you know, with everything going on 
you know, people need to be able to connect with someone any way that they can in order to get the help they can. So thank you for doing that. Oh, absolutely. I'm really grateful to start a practice in a time when there are so many options. Mm -hmm. And so even if somebody is not a fit within my own practice, I can connect them with therapists that fit what they need. Yeah. And it's not, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I, I have to have, you know, money for therapy. No, there's agencies where if, you know, depending on your insurance, you may not have to pay anything because your insurance covers it. There's providers that see people pro bono, there's sliding scale, there's so many options. Yeah. You know, and then you have like better, better help and talk space where you can like X and email therapists. There's a lot of options and, uh, you know, so anybody out there that is thinking of starting therapy, I don't mind if you reach out to me and I can connect you with somebody that's in your state, you know, give you a few links to find your own therapist. I love that. I love that. And when I went to your website, I learned a lot. Okay. Okay. I, I learned a lot. I'm pulling it up here on my phone. When I say I, when I went to it, I said, okay, I love the fact that you, first of all, your website is very warm and welcoming. And I love the fact that you, you really, you really want to make sure that people know, you know, if you're a caretaker, because people, people don't realize that, you know, caretakers go through things too. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, no matter if you're caretaking someone that's sick, if even if that's your profession is to mm-hmm. be a professional caretaker, you know, sometimes, you know, they need to talk as well. So I absolutely love that. And I love the fact that you you talk about those things that that people don't want to talk about on the website. You talk about endometriosis. You talk about that. You talk about PTSD and what those services look like. Because a lot of times people don't want to, you know, they don't want to stack things on top of each other. Okay, well, I'm a woman who's dealing with infertility. I'm a caretaker to my sick parent and I suffer from PTSD. But uh-huh. some people don't want to, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to take ownership of those things. And I love the fact that you said, okay, even though these are the marginalized labels, you are one whole person. Absolutely. You know? And I love it. And I, I love it. And I love the fact that you said, you know what, with time, effort, you know, um, you can heal. I love that. I love, uh-huh. I love that. When I read that on the website, I was like, yes, yes, she gets it. Because a lot of times people feel like, okay, I go to a couple of therapy sessions. Oh, I'm good. I don't need that, you know, or they, you know, go to therapy and they get medication and they, they figure after a few months, oh, I'm okay. I don't need that. But the thing about it is that in order to heal as a whole, you have to continually do those things in the spaces in which you can. Oh, that's powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, I'm I'm cool with with going to therapy, you know, because a lot of people feel like they don't want to talk about people going to therapy or, oh, you shouldn't tell people to go to therapy. I said, no, tell people. Yes. Tell them. Absolutely. Uh, and thank you for, for, for researching and looking at my website and mentioning all of that. Yes, man. <laughs> That's what I do. You, uh, you know, I love it. Well, when it comes to, like, infertility, right, a lot of people don't, because that's, again, that's, that's that secret shame. We don't want people to know that, that we struggle with that. Yeah. Um, because, you know, th- typically Thanksgiving, Christmas, family gathering, people are saying, you know, what are the questions? Who are you dating? When yep. are you going to get married? When oh, are you yeah. going to have a baby? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah. These inappropriate questions. Yeah. And so, as it relates to infertility, a lot of women don't want to say, well, you know, this is what I'm, I'm going through. Or if they've experienced infant loss, they don't want to talk about that. Yeah. And so, I provide a safe place for people to talk about those things that they just can't talk about with anybody else about and when we think about caretakers that includes your hairdresser that includes your barber that includes 
you know, not, not just nurses and docs and teachers, yeah. but anybody that is a caretaker, even for a family member. Uh, and as black women, we don't often get the chance to be vulnerable. Mm, now that's powerful. Society historically has not given us permission to be anything other than strong. Wow. So the people that come to me can come and they're in a safe place. They can take off their armor and they're in a place where they don't have to, you know, quote unquote, protect themselves. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, It's safe. Yeah. And they can talk about and process all the things that they are just not able to do um, or to speak about in their families, with their friends and their church and anywhere else. Wow. See, I love that. I love that you created that space because uh, a lot of times people don't realize, you know, uh, I love that you say like your beauticians, your barbers. I love that because people don't realize like um, when you are someone and you provide a, a service, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you're a service provider. You you make connections with people every day. You connect with them in some kind of way. If they're a customer, if they're someone like you said, like a barber or a mm-hmm. beautician, you know. These are people that you're going to see all the time. They're going to know your names. They're going to have, you know, you're going to give them pictures of your kids. You're going to, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, hey, this guy gave my son his first haircut. But then you also, you know, this guy can also be the person that's sitting there telling you, like, man, you know you're wrong for that. You should have took that trash out when that lady asked you to. You know, so, <laughs> you know, a lot of times people forget that, you know, uh, hey, they deal with different personalities too. It's not just school teachers. It's not just nurses. It's, you right. know, you know, so I have to say thank you for doing that. And, you know, I, I love the fact that you deal with people with uh, PTSD as well, because a lot of times people, you know, they go through things and they don't even realize that that's something, you know, that they have PTSD and that those things are, you know, um, you know, subconsciously coming out of their system in different ways. People don't even really know that. So I love the fact that on your website, you talk about that. I love that. Absolutely. I love it. You know, and I built a practice in a small town that is LGBTQ plus affirming. Yeah. I built a practice where trans lives absolutely matter and are welcome. Love it. And th- that's a big deal when you live in a place and we know that, that, that people in the trans community are being murdered every single day. Their lives are advancing every day. Yeah. We still live in a society that for some reason, uh, you know, for a large number of our population, the LGBTQ plus community is still, there's still a stigma. There's still, you know, shame attached to that. And, um, and they're not treated with the respect and love in which they absolutely deserve. Yeah. You're right about and that. And so my practice encompasses all of that. You are welcome if you're out there. Um, all parts of you are welcome and, and, and it's a truly non judgmental and, and loving place. Round of applause for Tasha. This is what I'm talking about. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And uh, I, I love the fact that you said that because a lot of people don't realize, you know, when we talk about marginalized communities, that's more than just, you know, black women or black men or, uh, you know, LGBTQ plus, you know, it's more than that, you know, and a lot of times people forget that truthfully in life, people were gravitate in all of these spaces at some point and, you know, or be around people in those spaces. So we have to know how to deal with each other and walk with each other on this journey called life. We have to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. This is, I, like I said, I love it. I want you to tell the people that are listening in um, right now, if it's someone who, you know, they're a caretaker, they're um, military, they're, uh, you know, a veteran, they are, um, you know, someone that's dealing with fertility issues. They're someone that's dealing with PTSD, uh, uh, PTSD. They're a teenager that's dealing with certain issues. What are some words of encouragement to you uh, that you can give them to make that initial call to get that extra help? I would say to anybody that's listening that is in any one of those categories, it is hard 
to kind of come to terms with what we've experienced. Yeah. It's hard to trust another person with the things that you have kept safe, you know, but it's worth it. And you're worth it. Yeah. To have the chance to go into a space where you can be vulnerable, where you can be safe, and where you can process things with a professional that's going to help you, you know, and not judge you, you're worth it. And, you know, just take a chance. Take, when I made my first therapy appointment, I said, look, if this is, if this does not work, I'm not going to therapy anymore. But it worked. And then I became a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> so give it a chance. You yeah. are worth it. And you deserve to be healed from whatever you're experiencing. I love that you said that. You said, hey, you know, I was one of those people, too. I was a skeptic and said, oh, I don't know. Yes. I, don't, I don't know if I need this. I don't know, you know. <laughs> and you did it. And look at the, the growth, you know. And, yeah. you know, th that's what I, I've been. It's, it's like a theme with all of the people that have been on, you know, the entrepreneurs that have been on tonight and the writers that have been on tonight. It's kind of like that theme, like, you know, you sit back and you reflect, but you want people to know that story because there are people out there that have the same story or the same situation or that have been there so thank you for creating that space oh thank you for, for having me on your show i appreciate it not a problem and you know you make sure you keep in contact with me you got my personal phone number so you let me know if you need <laughs> anything you know if you need the business guru for anything you let me know and definitely keep in contact with me because I want people to get more, you know, information. So if there's anything out there that you need me to post or share, you know, definitely let me know. And, you know, let me know if any developments with you and your company, you know, uh, as time go by. I absolutely will. I love that. And I want you to tell people where they can reach you. Where can they get this greatness? So uh, for anybody that is want to follow me on social media I can be found on Instagram I kind of live there and they can find me at Tasha Hunter LCSW if they want to get my book What Children Remember it's on Amazon they can find it anywhere ebooks are sold Barnes and Noble, Walmart it's available pretty much everywhere and they can also order it at the local library love that I love that. Okay, and could you give them your website information as well? Sure. Uh, two websites uh, for my private practice. Uh, it's ascensiongrowthcenter.com. That's my private practice, and they can get more information. And then my author website is tashahunterauthors.com. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I'm going to make sure that I pass along this information as well. Uh, so that people can get this greatness and get your book. Um, you know, me, myself, I am uh, ordering that book and I've asked uh, one of my team members to get that book for me this week so that I can read it and I can tell people more about the greatness in which you wrote. But I have to say, thank you for being one of those change agents that are out here and, you know, for doing something different and for making sure that you tapped into the pain of the community to see what was needed so that we can heal and move forward and just be great individuals. I just want to thank you for that. Thank you so much, Candace, for having me on your show. Thank I you. I appreciate it. No problem at all. Any Look, anytime, okay? If you want to co-host, you call me up. You say, <laughs> hey, I want to co-host with you, and we're going to do This is going to be our segment for this show. And I'm like, yes, 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 Tasha, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm... Yes, I'll, I'm, yes. I'm for that, all of that. And all you have to do is let me know. I do this each and every Sunday from 7 to 9, at, you know, uh, Central Standard Time. I don't care if it's something where we just get on Facebook, you know, uh, live in the middle of the day and you drop some tips and some hints and some things that people need to make sure that they are in good mental health at all times. Wonderful. That's a good idea. I love that. We're definitely going to um touch and get something playing. Yay! I'm very excited about this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, you know, like I said, keep in touch. You got my personal phone number. Thank you for being a guest. And uh, I encourage everyone to go out and buy the book and to check out her website because it's absolutely great. And pass along the information to anybody that you, that you feel might need it. And, hey, 
go ahead and make that initial call yourself. You never know. It can it cannot hurt you. Is Tashi still there? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> I was like, keep on it. I love I mean, yeah, go get my book. Reach me, you know, if you have any questions on social media. Yes. Anything that I can do, I'm I'm for you, I'm with you and and I understand. So reach out. Don't be afraid. Awesome. Thank you for being my guest tonight. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. The business knowledge broker. Hey, yo, guru, you ready? Business marketing.